The average lifespan as we discussed back in 1950s was 40. The average lifespan today is 70. The thing is that we started finding solutions very recently. I did not have to do that hard work that people have been putting on for the last 70 years. I just get to be one of those people who can use this science and bring it to people. It's just that people need a better guided journey toward it and the thing is everyone should be able to access that. But then the idea was someone who could join hands and build it with me. Hello and welcome back everyone to the latest episode of IRE Talks podcast powered by GIBS Business School. I am Palak Bansal, your host and as promised, I am back with another inspiring story of an incredible journey of resilience and innovation. Somebody once said, the only limit that exists are the ones that you built in your own mind and in the middle of difficulty lies an opportunity. Join us as we delve into the extraordinary journey of a visionary who embodies the essence of turning adversity into opportunity. In today's episode, we will uncover the remarkable experience of Mr. Darshit Patel, founder, Decode Age, first longevity research company of India as featured on Shark Tank India. From overcoming personal loss to navigating the complexities of global disruption, his narrative is a testament to the remarkable human capacity to thrive amidst adversity. So without further ado, let's embark on this journey of courage, determination and the unwavering pursuit of purpose. Hi Darshit, welcome to IRE Talks podcast. Thank you so much, Palak. So before we get into the details of how Decode Aid started and you know what it stands for, what was your journey like, I'm personally very curious about the concept of uh, you know, recovering that age uh, which you have lost in your young generations. So, how is what is that about, and how did you get that idea that you can go back into your, uh, you know, making that 80s into early 50s again? So, where did that idea come from? See, honestly, I won't take any credits for the idea to myself, right? <clears throat> the global science has been evolving, right? And if you see. If you trace it back to 1950s, you know, what was the average lifespan? Do you have any idea? Uh, 70s, 80s probably? Back like in healthy? 1950s, the average lifespan of humans was 41. Oh. 70s is what it is today. So why were people dying so early back then? There was the first reason was child infant mortality. We did not have a hygienic way to, uh, you know, for childbirth which was the yes. major reason that people were dying very early so the average lifespan kind of reduces there's a ma major hit there people used to die of infectious disease a cough could turn to death in 1950s but we don't know that as of today so the biggest epidemics back then were the infectious disease and infant mortality you know when we started controlling them we realized that our, our lifespan went up rapidly by the time we were into 80s the average lifespan was almost at about 55 to 60. Hmm. The idea here is that as of today, if you see what is the largest epidemic that we are facing? Age. No, it's okay. age related diseases, right? Okay. So something we call the four horsemen of uh, death right now. The four horsemen are cancer, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all three into one, neurodegenerative, right? Cardiovascular issues and diabetes. These are the four main reasons people die today. And what is one common factor amongst all of them? The process of aging. None of these diseases really come to you before the age of 35. So there's something happening in the first 35 years which is eventually causing you this disease. Oh. Now secondly, the average lifespan as we discussed back in 1950s was 40. The average lifespan today is 70. But the average age to get a chronic disease right now is 40. That means we increased the lifespan by 30 years, but we are living those 30 years miserably with drugs, with hospitals. Our bills are increasing in the last decade of our life. The quality of life is reducing year on year. So behind all of this is aging. And this is not something we are discovering today. This has been written about since the year 1960s in one of the most reputed research journals and one of the, by one of the most reputed researchers of the world, right? The thing is that we started finding solutions very recently. 
so now the community can come out and really say that aging is probably at the root cause of all these deaths that we are seeing today more than 50 percent of people who are dying globally are because of aging and age related diseases and now we have actually found out interventions which can help us reverse a lot of this okay so reversing biological age comes from a science which is at least 70 years old it is not something that has recently come up it's just that it has found its way to a market right now so you can imagine you know from the point that the science starts to the time that it reaches a common man the journey is 60 to 70 years and i'm so glad that i came in at a point with, where we are almost at an inflection i did not have to do that hard work that people have been putting on for the last 70 years i just get to be one of those people who can use this science and bring it to people so honestly the global science has evolved a lot you go to states you go to australia you go to europe uk developed countries people have been incorporating these values in their life for the past decade my job was just to bring it to india to bring this global science first to india and probably build on that build something in india which can be taken back to the world so the idea of reversing your biological age I'm not saying aging I'll not say that the next birthday that you have, you can reduce one candle out of it. No, it's just about how your biology is performing, right? And that's all we need to reverse. So 80s is the new 50s. You can already see that, right? People in their 50s and 60s who have made sure that their wellness and health journeys are all right, they work like a 30, 35 year old. They run marathons these days. Yes. So it's no sci-fi that we are talking about. It's happening every day with us. It's just that people need a better guided journey toward it. And the thing is, everyone should be able to access that. And that's what we are trying to do at Decodage. It's, uh, it's reversing biological age, but for everyone, making it understandable, making it accessible and making it affordable. So the name Decode Age, it, it's very self-explanatory, you know, understanding your age and doing the right things according to that. As you rightly said, a guided journey to reversing the biological age of your body physically. Mm. Now, again, you know, what kind of research would have went behind this to make Decode Age what it is today? What were your uh, you know, thought process when you, in your initial days, you would have went ahead, uh, talked to people about it and, you know, this is something that I am planning to do. This is what it will impact. So how was that journey for you, the initial phase of your life? Quite interesting. See, I personally got exposed to the aging and longevity science back when I was in masters. So I knew about this field. I knew about all the great people in the world working in it. I read a lot of stuff on that, be it research papers, be it books or just, you know, good, well-written blogs. So I knew quite a lot about this field. It's just that I needed someone in India who could help me out with this. Hmm. Because I came from a science background, although I knew, do know about business in bits and pieces from the kind of family background that I've had. But then the idea was someone who could join hands and build it with me. I did go to a lot of people, you know, my ex-professors. I tried to understand if this science can be taken to the people, if the science is ready. I had my own opinions, what to start with, and is it the right entry point for me? So obviously, a lot of ex-professors helped. A lot of family members and friends who are into business, probably elder to me, have certain kind of experience. I talked to them. But the most important conversations were two conversations, one with Parth and one with Rakesh. I always Your say that, yes, these are my co-founders. Uh, without a co-founder, you are absolutely nothing. Your business cannot be built. The general idea that one man can win a world was true to a certain extent. I do believe that single individuals can build great businesses. But then when there's a team of two to three people who think alike, whose visions align, but skills are you know, complementary to each other, that's when you will be really able to create more value. So I went to Parth, a childhood friend, uh, probably we, we go law way back, and I knew that he, uh, he has done entrepreneurship before, he had exited a business in 2019, oh. he was looking to do something in health, so, but he was more focused on the traditional medicine, which is Ayurveda and everything. Uh, so I went to him and I just told him, listen, this is the idea. Uh, we might be a bit early for India, this idea might be a bit early for India, but then if we start it, we could really start creating an ecosystem around it. 
we could really start creating impact very early in india and the modern day india is not the india of the 1950s or 60s or 70s the modern day india wants things right now yes. they are not ready to wait for a developed country to try it out so that was the conversation i had with him and i think well i'm glad that he <laughs> <laughs> absorbed it all and uh, you know he decided to join hands second was with rakesh the conversation with him was a tad bit easier the man is a tri- ironman triathlete uh he was doing all this before india was talking about it he knew a lot of this stuff so for me talking to him was much more easier in terms of science so i think those two were very important conversations uh it got me the right co-founders so that today i can sit back focus on the science focus on the product and i know that someone is having my back to take it to the market market it bring it to the people help me with the pricing operations because the business is not just a product yes right? so correct it's the everything around it so i think that those two conversations i would say were the most important so you mentioned one term now you know most of our viewers as well they do not come from science background so you mentioned longevity focus so what does that represent or what does that mean in uh, you know creating a product like decode age so when i say longevity focused what is let's first get into the roots of what is the word longevity you know longevity is a word used quite you know in a versatile way even a product has its own longevity how life long? cycle yeah, duration life cycle. yes so what's the life cycle of an average human as of today like we discussed before a person is born he survives 30 years with utmost fitness right the teenage is the most power active yes then 18 to 30 is when you kind of stable down you have a a, a bit more gravitas hmm. towards your personality uh between the age of 30 to 40 is you really start facing some problems with your back aches headaches yes headaches back aches not able to sleep properly can't get hungry at the same time people have been using the word in so many are quite loosely yes. where it's too bad i'd suggest please if you're not able to sleep for 5 nights it's not in somania so <laughs> that's one thing so the average uh, life cycle of a human is that in the age of 30 to 40 you start developing one or two problems which later manifest into disease then you live with that disease for another 30 years and then in the last 10 years you are so much dependent probably on your family on your friends on hospitals on doctors on drugs you have this drug cabinet you know yes. monday tuesday wednesday thursday so this is how an average human life looks like longevity is not about increasing your life expectancy i don't expect palak to live for 80 years i rather want palak to live 60 years in such good health that 60 can easily become 90 you know hmm. just because people are getting their first disease at 30 and still are able to survive till 70 imagine your body's resilience right if i take that 30 mark to the 60 mark then you'll be living till 100 as well so health span this is what we called health span the number of years you live in a healthy and disease free state is the focus of longevity medicine the idea is not to just increase life span so that is what this uh, longevity stands for when it comes to decode age it comes to decode age it comes to any other company any other scientist talking about longevity in the world they are talking about health span they are talking about increasing the number of years you live without a disease okay not the overall age yes. that we survive yes okay okay So you know that's it when um, me my team at Ari Talks we were researching about your profile how your journey has been so what actually caught my eye is that you have been a lecturer you have started with uh, you know TEDx speaker then you have gone into lectures and there's been so much that you have been doing but entrepreneurship was something which happened so from that you know like um, how we say that average lifestyle to taking your business to shark tank india what was that journey for you you know personally professionally how did that happen no honestly if the starting point is what we are talking about starting a startup right yes uh, everything else follows so visiting lectureship is something i just enjoy you know i have been a part of toastmasters club i like public speaking i like talking 
uh, I might not be very good at one-on-one -on -one talks <laughs> but uh, i like talking to a public and that is something that has just motivated me over time in my life you know be it back in my bachelor days i used to be so excited if there was a presentation i had to do to the class and everything so that is something just that excited me a lot but obviously that is not the real value the real value is the work you do right if you're doing good work then you get a chance to go and talk to people it's not yes. just about just because you're talking to people you are creating value so that's the other way around so for me what i speak about be it here or be it on any stage you know it's not everything for me for me everything that i do on the back end is very important i know that the more quality work the more hard work i put in on the back end it's going to manifest into something like this right so that is one of the things and when we started doing decodage we started in a garage by the way so we were a garage startup proper oh. yeah so we started in my dad's garage three of us used to get together i remember it was a room this size you know probably one side was the stock one side i used to be there we had a couple of people taking care of accounts and you know everything oh so, wow yeah it was just four <laughs> corners of the room were four different departments that was how we started and no one starts a startup thinking ke main ek din shark tank mein jaunga ek din tedx mein jaunga but our core goal was that let's put in quality work let's do something good for india probably it it might get recognized it might not get recognized that's not the core End motivation goal, behind yes. it the core motivation is let's do something good so that it satisfies you you know the f i still remember the feeling when you know the first product we sold it was a supplement and i was just talking to you that you know this was a 6500 rupees supplement yes. for one month yes. and when we launched it when i saw the price tag i'm like kaise lega koi matlab it's so expensive for the indian market but when that first product got sold that was a bigger achievement into all of our hearts than anything else that we have done you know that was the first push where it started growing from there and you know getting into shark tank was just another thing in this journey so and i think tedx also came after that it was not before this for hmm. sure so you know you have been a gold medalist in your uh, post graduation so most of the families you know when it comes to entrepreneurship especially in india the startup culture is still you know a little hustle so most parents or families they go into a mindset that this might not be the safe move at this a uh, young age what if you know you don't succeed what if it's not what you are seeing that comes true so was it the same even at your end or you know did you have support from your family and how was that on the personal end no i think uh, that is one thing i am very grateful for me in my life because my family has come from a business family it's a generational business they know building businesses creates hmm. more value than anything else in fact there was resistance when i wanted to get into science i oh. still remember the conversation when i was about 16 and i was in surat you know it's a tier 2 city we are talking about the year 2010 2009 10 right and back then when i said that uh, to my parents that hey listen i want to do uh science i want to do biology they were like ah reconsider it we have business you can take care of that why do you want to get into this hassle of science and everything so they eventually agreed ke yaar chalo theek hai karna hai aap karo if you are interested and i was academically good back then as well so they were like okay if you are interested go on and do it then i told them another i gave them another heart attack i'm like listen i'm doing biology but i'm not becoming a doctor okay i want to do biotech and all oh. and then my mom was like absolutely devastated she's like what the hell we don't even know what you're doing how will we guide you in case you get into something more resistance came from that side in fact when i told them that hey i have talked to a couple of people they are interested i want to do something on my own in business my dad and mom were very happy they're like chalo finally you are on he's track he's coming back yes uh, <laughs> you are on track chalo baaki sab to hum dekh lenge so there was a lot of support from the family you know not just when i was starting the journey but before that when i was when i had a bit of a rough patch also there were a lot a uh, lot more supportive like that and i think that really helps i mean that could be the best part that could happen to you definitely i think if the family supports you you can reach the moon true. that's that's very true, true when it comes to you know people in especially in their young ages absolutely now you know 
as we uh, saw your pitch on Shark Tank, and I'm sure our audiences would have definitely gone seen that episode as well. So there was this discussion about this being an untouched market in India, you know, reversing the age. And most of the time it is uh, misconcepted to be in the uh, vitals or supplements or these, uh, you know, bottled tablets, multivitamins <laughs> market. So now that you have a completely new market under, uh, you know, your brand, you don't have a direct competition. So it comes with its own challenges plus its own opportunities at the same time. So what are those challenges for you and how do you evaluate whether it's a challenge or an opportunity or you know how good would it be? How do you evaluate those for your business? No, I think a uh, very important question this one and I take a bit more time to you know, sure. explain this. See the first of all to start a business, you need a right ecosystem, right? Hmm. Uh, if you're talking about a commoditized product, let's say a healthy snacking hmm. or probably protein bars or probably a supplement like a multivitamin, you know, the ecosystems are ready. You have the manufacturers, they know their formulations, they know what works, they know what they, the, even on the marketing side, you know, you know what kind of content is working, what kind of content is not working. You can study your competitors, yes. learn from their yes. mistakes. You could do a lot of things when the ecosystem is ready. When the ecosystem is not ready, you have to try everything. And any small thing you want to try costs money. And this, uh, the biggest problem every startup has is they don't have money. You know, because money is a limited yes. resource. We, for a small company or for a group as big as Reliance, money is always an important blocker. So when the ecosystem is not ready, it gets a bit challenging because you don't know where do you source your raw materials from. You don't know where do you get it packaged. You don't know what are the policies around it. You don't know how to, you know, get, take it to the market. You don't know what content is going to work. And the information is yes, not there. You yes. don't know what kind of uh, customer acquisition is going to happen. You don't know how much you have to spend on marketing. You don't know what platforms are going to. So there's a lot of don't knows, don't knows, don't knows. The only thing you know is how you make a product. Banana hai. That's, yes. that's all that you know. So to build an ecosystem is very important. The first point is that, so when you're creating a category, especially longevity, longevity is not a business. Longevity is an industry. If you go, go to US, right? This supplements, this testing, this R&D, this policy, this government involvement, yeah, the universities are part of it. So much, so much is happening. There are clinics, you know, there's a lot to learn there. India mein sab kuch nahi tha, hamare liye. We had to start from very rock bottom yes. of an industry. Or industry banana is very difficult. Business banana, business is a part of industry. But industry is the whole foundation. So there's no uh, direct foundation that you had for launching your business. There was no exactly, launch pad. Okay. Exactly our point. You know, so we had to struggle through a lot of things. You know, first understanding policies, ke kaise chalta hai, kya kar sakte hai, kya nahi kar sakte hai. Kahan pe legal troubles aa sakte hai, kahan pe nahi aa sakte hai, right? Then the other thing was, what kind of manufacturers will work for us? What kind of customers are going to come to us? So all that was a bit of a trial and error in the starting. So we had to definitely go through that, you know, it was it was not a easy journey. Easy journey, For yes. the first 18 months it wasn't. Then after the 18th month is when we really started understanding that we are kar rahe. That zero to one journey, yes. Tab toh kar rahe. Now, talking about challenges, you know, there was a good discussion on this on Shark Tank as well. I mean, thanks to the sharks, they asked some really intriguing questions, you know. So, the first of all is, there are two things. Like you said, opportunities and challenges, challenges. for an untouched market. Market untouched, hai, toh aapko market ka koi idea nahi hai. That's the first challenge. Uh, Every time you will go to an investor, they'll ask you three major questions. Aapka TAM kya hai? TAM, total SAM and SOM. Ah, yes. Total addressable market, service addressable market, service obtainable market. Yes. Iske to koi number hi nahi hai, untouched market ke. To aap kaise usse justify karoge ke aapka business kaun se level tak pahunch sakta hai? Aap kitna acquire kar paoge? To untouched market ka sabse bada challenge hai TAM, SAM, SOM. So untouched market's biggest challenge is TAM, SAM, SOM. Because if your TAM SAM SOM is not well established, there will not be a lot of organic interest from the venture funds for your business. So that is definitely a challenge. It's a challenge we are still facing. Because then what you have to do is you have to go to multiple markets. You have to find what, how are you placed in that market and how does that extrapolate to, you know, your current product offerings. 
for example let's say we do microbiome testing epigenomics yes. testing hmm. now no one in india knows what is the market of microbiome testing right what hmm. is the market of epigenomics so sometimes you have to go back you have to see okay genomics market has been existing in india for 10 years how has that grown how will you extrapolate it to microbiome because that's the nearest market you have then for example nutraceuticals we have a set of supplement products right so we go to the nutraceutical market we see what is now nutraceuticals this uh, vitamins the specialized nutraceuticals and everything so you have to go and see what is the specialized nutraceuticals market and then you have to come back and extrapolate where so you need to go like complementary markets which are yes. closer to your own market absolutely okay. like it's as simple as you go to a google today you search for healthy snacking market there'll be 10 sources credible sources yes they'll have exact numbers they'll mm -hmm. have cagrs for the past five years and the uh, predictions for the future you go and type longevity market in india absolutely zero hits on google so then you have to sit back and do that work yourself so that's one of the biggest challenges that come with an untouched market rest i've already covered the second is you don't know how consumers are going to react to it hmm. but that's, that's i think the important. biggest challenge yeah. yeah so it's very important to find that first thousand consumers and learn from them because these are the personalities that might be buying from you in the future as well so hmm. learning your first thousand consumers and not on a data perspective on an individual perspective we uh, i remember we have done this exercise we have said down ke uh, okay this is the customer uh, he has been buying for us for 6 months this is what the, he talked to us on the customer care so uh, for a lot of customers if you are listening to us right now uh, between the year uh, between june 2021 to june 2022 if you called our customer care and if someone picked up your call it was probably me or parth oh yes so <laughs> that's how it goes you start learning your consumers at an individual level because these are the personas that are probably going to be your future consumers as well so that's how you get into learning about your consumers as well the third thing if you check our website from year 2021 which was when we were just starting off in the market you see all the scientific we thought that science impresses big people, numbers and big then, names yes okay you always think that science impresses people but science also repels people when you use a lot of technical terms people lose interest so the kind of journey we have had to go through to you know how we make our content what is the perfect balance between a layman and a scientific content because you don't want to lose on the scientific essence because that's what your company is based on hmm. so things like experimenting with content these are the challenges opportunity is definitely there right because there's still always one percent of india which knows everything in the world right there is a one percent of indians who know a lot about things right and that is the biggest opportunity to start with in a category creating business because when you launch your product these one percent people who have read about it as much as you have will come to you and start buying use them as your leverage that's the biggest opportunity you can get the second opportunity is that you have this runway or two, two to three years when you will be creating a lot of stuff and hmm. at the end of third year there'll be a second mover something we call second mover advantage. who has observed you very closely yes, and yes. then entered into the exactly. market okay to make sure that you use that two to three years in a right way to make sure that the second mover does not take more advantage than you then you we yes. want competitors to come we want you all to you know start businesses in longevity it helps build an ecosystem but then please don't lose out on that first mover advantage that you have so these are the biggest opportunities you have when you are in a new category created so i think if we look back at 2021 when you were uh, new into the market and if we look at it today so do you see any direct competitors today or you know it's still a blue ocean that you are uh, operating in it's pretty much a blue ocean in a way that we build ecosystem now right we we don't just sell products at hmm. decodage we are building the entire ecosystem that we talked about initially in the industry side hmm. of it yes there are a couple of people doing testing that we are doing there are a couple of brands which have recently come up trying to get into the supplement space of longevity and uh, but yes our job is to create ecosystem now so entire thing under one Haan, yes. like hum log ne testing or supplements to bana liye hai hum log ka customer base solid ho gaya hai udhar us scale mode pe le jana but we we have to stay a step ahead always 
what we are doing extra i won't tell you here probably <laughs> okay. you will see it in the coming years but we are a step ahead we know that no okay and you know in this uh, journey of decode age it was rebranded it was previously life elements a couple years back sure. probably so how did rebranding happen like what made you feel that you know let's go from life elements to decode age and what advantage did you see there to take that move so when we launched as life elements we used to do a lot of generic supplements like multivitamins and all because hmm. at back then we thought that that could be a way for customer to bring to bring them to us first and then teach them or educate or make them aware about longevity and then take them to that path but i think almost a year down the line in the life elements journey we realized that we are losing the essence we are diluting the cause that we were Started in here for, for okay. right we were here to make sure that we start longevity industry in india we were not here to do stuff that has already been done in india hmm. so that was a major realization we had at about 8th or 9th month of life elements journey and we decided to scrap a lot of things that we were doing in terms of other supplements we are and we thought of re, uh, redoing or restructuring what we do now with restructuring came the brand name as well because life elements suited because if something is helping you live a better life it was life elements for us back then but then we were not here for life elements we were here to get into aging we started working on tests biological data that can help us get deeper into your aging processes so now it was a lot more aging focused and i think three of us were sitting and we were just thinking that is life elements the right way to go and we were like no 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 maybe we need a better name right and then decode age suddenly came up in that conversation and we were all like wow this is like hit moment ah uh, it was like that hit moment i'm like so much dopamine in my body that saying decode age and you know it resonates so nicely with what we do so that was the whole thing that we decided okay let's stick to decode age and now it is so easy it's on the tongue of a lot of people it's, it's we don't have to what do you do if someone asks us we decode it age. has the essence of the business yeah, the entire thing age. that you're trying to create exactly. correct that's true and you know when we start on an entrepreneurial journey so there's a lot of things that happen not only professionally you know side by side we have our own lives that goes on and uh, going through your journey we do see that you know parallelly when this all of this was happening there were a lot of uh, personal losses that you faced there was a lot of professional uh, you know hindrances that came with it so what kept you motivated to continue like what was that thought process that no i cannot give up i have to do this no i mean uh, see on a when you are at the positive high when you are at a high of your life motivation just comes generally the real test is when you are at the low of your life yes. if you can convert that to motivation that's when you are really going to go a step ahead there is not a single person i know in my life or i have read about in my life who hasn't gone through the low the low is the most important thing that's the first thing i want to make sure and honestly every low can either give you motivation or purpose you have hmm. to decide that wow. and either that or you decide to sulk about it and get deeper and deeper and deeper into that spiral dig the holes yes yes that now that's not a very ideal way to do things i mean thanks i don't know what has happened throughout my life maybe subconsciously i've been surrounded by people or probably i was reading the right things in my in the right stages of my life that helped me push through it as of today i can't pinpoint a factor ke maine ye kiya isliye maine usko that is why i was able to overcome that it was never like that the first purpose that i found in my life was because of a personal loss you know i lost a couple of my uncles uh, in the same month in the same year for cancer Oh. and this was back when i was in 50 uh, when i was 15 years old right oh. that gave me a purpose that okay if i want to do something in my life why don't i work with biology because diseases are causing so much pain before that i did not have an experience with a disease where i saw someone suffering so much you know and despite all that suffering you know the final end point is never going to be good so that was a that was that created a sense of purpose in me that Listen Darshad if if you want to create impact in life probably this might be the best way to for, move forward 
one thing is you realize that you have a purpose now but the second thing is you have to start working on it how, from the how next will day. i go there the yeah. next day you have to you know uh, i keep reading it on internet i might have read it in one of the books also the best way to react to a bad thing is to do it in the next 10 minutes of it agar kuch hua hai aapko like something bad has happened to you and you think that there is a way out do it in the next 10 minutes because that's the real push that will probably propel you so when that happened to me i went on to books i'm like if i have to do something in biology i can't just sit here and finish my 3 years of education then th- then think about it you go you pick up a book i started reading charles darwin uh, origin of species i understood 3 pages out of 1000 in that book back then but then it gave me a sense that okay then the next thing i explored gregor mendel and things just kept coming after that you know so it's one thing to find a purpose the second thing is to act on it right then came a bit of professional sabbaticals i don't know if it is a sabbatical it was a global sabbatical it was the covid, COVID. 19 yes yeah. uh, i had just finished my um, you know work phase in uk i came back to india my goal was my path was laid out when i was 16 i used to maintain a goal book i still maintain that in oh, that wow. 16 yeah i used to write that i want to be a phd i'll tell you a bit more things about it so uh, on one page itself i had written three things right i want to do a phd i want to be a ted ted speaker and i want to have my own genetics lab this was when i was 16 the three goals that i written phd probably sounded like the first one to do it and you know covid happened i came back to india universities throughout the world were closed down i was desperate i was applying a lot of places none of it worked out that probably put me in a bad place professionally and even mentally because you're stuck up you can't talk you feel to anyone stuck, yes. yeah you i i kind of got stuck you know but uh, one thing i never left since i was probably 14 years old was read every day no oh. matter what okay i started with jules verne around the world in 80 days back when i was 14 from their origin of species from there to bhagavad gita's and the Qurans and the holy bibles from there to spirituality to science and i just read i i i don't select stuff the next thing that comes into my hand i read so during covid time i'm said okay i said to myself that listen things are not working out in the best way professionally i was not in a good head space i was losing sleep not waking up fresh and everything but i never quit quit reading and gladly i was reading about longevity during that phase of my life oh. because i was you know exposed to it just before coming to india again okay so i read a lot in that 6 to 8 months i'm like i have nothing else to do probably just read 16 hours a day if possible right so i started reading 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 and then i said okay let's work in this field let's mm-hmm. see where we are with it i applied to a couple of companies in india who had projects not entirely on longevity but somewhere you know Close related to, science yes. or age related disease and all didn't work out didn't thought that i was being valued when i was given offers and everything so that's when i really thought that okay might be that if there is no opportunity let's start creating one so that's how the whole idea came so again the thing was i was going through a bad phase but i never lost motivation to gain some new knowledge or to apply some new knowledge somewhere so i think that really helps so i think if you per- if you have the right purpose and if you can motivate yourself koi bahar se nahi aane wala no one comes and tells you hey darshit if you are watching one of those motivational talks on youtube please stop <laughs> it's not helping you we are uh, probably what's helping you probably don't even take motivation from me it's not coming from here as well the idea is just that find your own motivation if if you think reading is your there motivation there would be that one thing which would drive yeah. you and it's unique to everyone exactly yes. i i come from academic background for me reading is a motivation if you are an th- athlete go take a run that's your motivation uh, if you are a philosopher do something related to that i mean everyone has their own motivation one thing cannot be applied over the other like uh, as it is uh, generally said you know uh, do more of what you like and that's going to give you the purpose of doing yeah, it again and again yeah, yes exactly. definitely and i mean the only thought that i had in my covid the positive thought that i had was listen uh, i told to myself in the mirror listen buddy you're never going to get so much free time to read and hog <laughs> as many letters in a book as you can so why not just do that 
Hmm. That's I think the most positive way uh, to look at as you know in the introduction I mentioned in the midst of that adversity you saw the opportunity that I can yes. learn and I can learn a lot and right. that that paid off for you. And you know, coming towards the younger generation, you know, probably our generation and the people who are still uh, figuring out how entrepreneurship works, and they are interested, but they don't have the right guide, as uh, you know, we were discussing initially. So, for people, especially now that you come from an industry or you know, a domain that is not yet established. there would be so many other things that we don't even know about and people out there they would have those ideas so what do you suggest them that how can they build a value how can they create that value how can they take it forward or what strategies you know to evaluate to know uh, to inspect whether or not it will be uh, worth the try so what do you suggest them No, no. First of all, I am a bit offended with this question when you mentioned younger generation. <laughs> I am also young. Uh, I, if you saw the Shark Tank episode, one of the sharks said that you were not able to reverse your age, but that was back in October. Now I am biologically three years younger than what I am today. <laughs> so that's one thing. I'll, I'll apologize yeah. for that. <laughs> no, no. Of course not. I was just kidding. So yeah, I mean, I don't know younger generation or someone. You know, it's just that you, as of today. opportunities in india are endless right if you are thinking that still that gisapita path where after your university you should try to apply a job for us 5 years 10 years yes. yes then come I back mean, yeah that's that's not the truth anymore people are coming back from there to here to pursue things and you will see a lot of those stories you know you pick up so many companies of founders who used to work outside have come back and started building some amazing companies out here indian ecosystem is developing people are getting more aware india is using internet better than ever before so people are knowing stuff you know chat gpt has a lot of traffic coming from india yes. as of today opportunities are endless in india and i mean the simple things you do simple things there's nothing complicated about it the first simple thing you could do is start right you can read a thousand books but unless you put your feet into that uh, into the ground you never really know the truth i know all about how a straight drive is played i know all about how a cover drive is played i know all about how to spin an off spin and i how to spin a leg spin doesn't mean when i go to the ground I'll and be i perfect, bowl that yes. and it will be perfect i won't be the ravi chandra and ashwin right so the first thing to do is get on the ground you know take that first step everything else will figure out don't plan too much i always say that average life span of a human is 70 but an average life span of a plan in a startup is 3 months who everything changes after 3 months not even a year yeah, yeah it it evolves it changes you know i'm not saying it will change completely head to toe but then it will evolve so and it will evolve only when you start working on it mm-hmm. so that is very important because you realize there's a lot of practical challenges that come when you're on the ground you know probably your feet might hurt your head might hurt something will happen right when you are working on the ground so the first thing to do is to start you know you start figuring out things from there and when we talk about for example i often hear from parth who takes care of our marketing and all you know back when we started doing d2c marketing uh, there was not as much that we know as of today that we knew back then you you realize a lot of things you know customer acquisition cost how are they calculated oh, yes. there are 15 <laughs> ways to calculate it you know some website will suggest something else some website will suggest something else how does marketing work how does paid marketing work what is seo and stuff so thanks to shark tank and you know people like yourself who are building this platforms where at least you know the terminology that okay there is something called cac so you can go back and google search and okay what, what is that it? Yes. it is a customer acquisition cost how is it calculated so use this platforms to learn that what are these important metrics that you might come across when you are in business right so these are very important things there are great tools available i mean open ai has done a fantastic job not just in the way that what they have developed as chat gpt but then using that a lot of people have developed tools Oh yes, correct. You know there are there are if you if you're talking about a website there's something called conversion rate. Hmm. You can map how much time a person is spending on a particular web page, how much time they are seeing this particular click thing. rate, open yeah, rates, yes. Exactly. 
there's so many tools to evaluate all of this right and until you really start getting into it now this is what is there on the surface of the internet right on the surface of the internet you will get all the basic things but then try to go a step deeper you know go to the third page fourth page of your google search you know go if you're if you're working in a science related field probably go to your pubmeds go to your research gates and everything mm. that's where things are buried you know because if something was invented today it will come on a google search from a marketing perspective 5 years down the line and if you want to remove that gap you have to read this not the one that is coming from your google search so mm. you go back trace back where the first ideas are posted i don't know if people in science are watching this probably journals are even the last place where a science comes there is something called bio rx iv portals right where people submit their preprints before the paper is already published that's where you get access to a lot of tools right you know how people are thinking about a certain problem and everything so i mean you have to be smart when you're searching google you cannot be i google search and i'm really good at keyword search and everything that might not be the best way there's a lot of things buried in a layer of internet which only smart people can get so, access so so can to. we have one of those cheat codes which i think our audiences our students who are into research they can use no no absolutely see if you are into research like i said bio rx iv is a very good portal for biological research you know so the paper which is going to be published in 2024 you can get access to those authors and preprints right now right oh. there like bio rx iv so that's good for this one biology yes yeah now you might see a million videos on youtube for let's talk about marketing for customer acquisition and everything right but there are some really a players in the world who have written important books two important books i'd like to mention which parth keeps reading and he tells me a lot about from that books one is making websites win it's a very important book if you are running a direct to consumer business and if you have a website where you want to improve conversions and you don't want to depend on e-commerce platforms that that book is really going to teach you how to go from 0 to 1 oh okay and then by the way those guys have an agency in us so they literally tell you first you go to 0 to 1 only then will take your project so making websites win note down that book very interesting book i think you all should also read it in business bag definitely one is dot com secrets dot com secrets yeah, okay yeah again very good very smart book you you don't see this if you have a twitter influencer that you are following and he's saying top 10 books to read before you are 30 you won't find this book there i've never heard it there. yes these books are really buried in the second layer of internet which i always say you know very niche community of people who read this kind of stuff you know if you want to follow a guy on twitter follow naval naval ravikant excellent person if you are starting a startup uh and you want to get into the startup philosophy side of things you know how investors think uh how a founder should think and all that it's it's these are the real guys you know not the ones that you keep seeing in your popular media that's very interesting also when you are a founder whatever you do in your life okay if you if you are eating also no think about how that is going to reflect in your startup that is something that has helped me you know i read a lot of sci-fi that's my personal interest but then you know when you're reading sci-fi you might be missing out those between the lines where a character says something which is really deep yes. you say oh wow what a beautiful line no apply that read fyodor dostoevsky i've learned more from that guy talking about russian revolution than <laughs> anything else of a modern day literature as hmm. well so you know there are change your perspective that's very important when you when you're looking at anything in your and you, if you want to do a startup change your perspective towards your everyday things that is probably going to help you and uh, if you ask parth uh, then he will always say that i dream about it uh, parth always dreams about stuff he wakes up at 3 and he would message you and he's like i got this in my dream why can't we do something <laughs> like this you know so it's it's always like that very important thing that i have learned from parth personally is that parth is not a science guy okay but he knows that he has to market science and in the last two and a half years i have seen him going from not understanding a basic biology term to a point where he can identify what is a good quality research paper versus what is not a good wow. quality research paper that needs hard work Definitely. that is a cross domain skill that you don't easily develop 
people after PhDs are still struggling to do that, you know. And I mean, kudos to him that he's able to do that. So I think the the these are some things. I mean, the most important thing is what I spoke in the first line. Go to that second layer of internet. Hardly people know that there exists this second layer yes. of internet <laughs> of niche people talking. I mean, if you are liking social media, then probably Reddit is your place. Substack is your place, right? Medium is your place, not Facebook, Instagram. Yes, you market your stuff there, but you gain knowledge from these guys, right? You won't believe there's a scientific nutrition uh, Reddit, uh, you know, what do you say? It? Reddit feed, uh -huh. know, something yes, like that. Yes, we use a yes. particular term there. They've been talking about longevity supplements in India since last uh, 2017. Okay, so people who have been using those supplements in India are sharing their experiences and that's where you get really uh, real knowledge as well. Smart people talking about things that are not easily talked about. So I think that's interesting. You should go to those places for knowledge and skills. And I hope they are all making notes to where they can find all this information. Now, you know, coming towards wrapping up the episode. So you have already given out a lot of pointers for our audience to today, you know, go back, fall back on, Google it up and, you know, as you said, go to the second page, third page and find actual things for themselves. One last message that would be for the budding entrepreneurs or people who want to take up entrepreneurship. What would that message be? Because, you know, as you said, when you start, you have a vision in front of you and by when you start, and when you have already started that step one, step two, you're going on, you lose the sight of that vision somewhere. And you know, you get carried away with what is there. That, okay, this is something which is happening, let's do that. Hmm. So for people, what would that message be? Like, how can they hold on to their purpose and not, you know, get uh, go with the currents or just get lost in the currents like that? Right. So, I mean, the first thing that you got to do starts even before thinking about a startup is building a network you know something that i have focused on before even a vague thought of startup, uh, startup came to my mind you know and we always think that network is what we are a group of uh, 10 students in a university let's stay in touch hmm. that's not network right network is those valuable pieces or those valuable people who know that you are not talking to them every day, but then they will come up and show up when you need help. This is very important. This friends and family, yes, that's part of your network. But then there are these really important people you need to connect. And if you are a business guy, go and network with a science guy. If you are a science guy, go and network with a business guy. Build a cross domain network. Because the first thing that you'll require when you're starting a startup is these people. Because when you want to start a startup, you don't know how a company is incorporated. Yes. You don't know what are the legalities behind it. You don't know, uh, you know, uh, how to open a bank account. What is a corporate account? What is a personal account? All these things, you know. So if you have a CA in your network, imagine how easy that would be. You give that guy a call and you're like, listen, buddy, I want to start a company. Can you guide me ABC, through that? ABC, he'll ABC, be there. ABCD, yes. done, right? Next, uh, if you have someone in your marketing, will be like, hey, listen, this is the product. I don't know how to go D2C, how to go B2B. Yes. Can you teach me all this? Hey, listen, you can do this, this, these things. So that cross domain network is the first thing that I've often stressed about to anyone that I talk to. I'm glad that I had people like Parth, people like Rakesh in my close knit network, right? Uh, of course, my own mentors uh, in terms of professors, in terms of uh, people who have built businesses before and all that. So I think network is very important. That's a prerequisite, not requisite for a startup, but a prerequisite. Prerequisite, the backdrop. Exactly. The second thing is, you have an idea in your mind. It is an idea forever. If you really are serious about it, and if you want to go and talk to someone that, hey, I want to work with you on this idea, don't just go there with an idea. That is not a solid start. At least incorporate a company that shows that you are you have an intent to do to something, do something you know? yes go with starting the starting a company takes 50000 to 60000 rupees right along with that first money that you put in your bank account do that without that there is no clarity of intention to anyone that you will talk to hmm. so take that first step and that first step has to be taken by yourself right 
you don't when i went to parth i already had a company where my dad was my partner because i did not have anyone else i'm like dad be my partner if not anything you handle my accounts that's your core skill right so i i started a company with my dad and then i went to parth right so you take that first step that kind of shows that you are really on to it right it's it's when you go to an investor when you go to your first co-founder uh, and try to talk to them they won't get convinced ke dekho duniya mein itna chal raha hai there's so much things happening we can also do so much my vision is to build a billion dollar company tangibility these are just words yes tangibility is very important right what you have done what is the first step you take the first step you start the journey then someone will join the journey yes there's no Correct. journey at the starting point so take that first step show that intent to people by actions not just by words and the third thing you very rightly pointed out the vision you know every great founder beat steve jobs beat mark zuckerberg they have always talked about vision but vision is something that you have close to your heart your brain doesn't agree to that your brain is constantly thinking about the challenge of the today right correct one practice that has helped me is that i have sketched out a vision for what 15 years 20 years 10 years 5 years down the line might look for us hmm. okay or might look for me myself as well there are tough days in a startup hmm. uh, uh, we are currently at about 900th or 950th day of our startup and i would say that around 899 days out of these were tough ones they were not oh. easy ones right you lose hope you lose all basically you lose a lot of stuff you know you lose your head you lose your hair uh, the people in my team 25 years age probably having white hair right now <laughs> but yes you lose a lot of things you know and the first 1000 days are not going to be easy but every time you have a tough day you go back home and before you sleep you close your eyes and you look at that vision you know not that not with an adamancy that i want to reach here but just with a manifestation soft heart, just manifestation or probably not even manifestation just it gives you a reason of why you are doing today right okay yes why you should sleep today and why you should wake up tomorrow go with equal grit equal hard work back to that desk and start working on it it's very important the reason you know we talked about purpose we talked about motivation but the reason is this right reason is this vision that you have and the vision is only for the night by the way when you are in the day in the office the present is more important than the future aaj se kal pe nahi gaye to kal to there will be nothing there will be nothing tomorrow so when you are in your office think about today it's that last 5 minutes of your day you utilize to uh think of the tomorrow, vision yes. and everything but the challenges of today are more important than the vision of tomorrow so you keep solving that first and don't lose hope i mean uh and don't lose hope see you will lose hope if the final destination is success for you and if you have a certain definition of success then you are definitely going to lose hope what really helps is not having a definition of success because it's different for everyone i don't have to re- repeat that everyone knows that everyone has talked about that success is different for everyone everyone yes. don't have a definition of success have a definition of a vision it could be that i want to help a billion people for some it could be money hmm. for some it could be this is the impact i want to bring this is the social impact i uh, i want to bring for some it might be the personal fame that i want to gain name in this field these are different definitions of vision and don't correlate it with success because then it will create a pressure on you keep it a vision yeah be it it's chill that's where i want to reach that's fine i don't know what is success in between i know work i know vision and i know that i have to worship everything that comes in between that's probably it this is where i want to go and i'll figure out how to go on the way yes yes, yes. and don't think about problems of tomorrow as well agar main if i do this then probably this is the problem i'm going to face are yeah. baba do it then you will figure out right you don't try to solve tomorrow's problems today aaj ke liye enough hai so that's that's the three t ways the first is build cross domain networks cross domain networks not just networks very important that term cross domain networks second is keep finding your reasons to get up every day yes. get to that build desk your vision. and yes, yes and keep doing that and the third is take that first step without that there is no second step there is no journey journey is only when you have taken 10 15 steps yes. 
and with that we have come to an end of this episode as we close the chapter i hope the narrative shared by mr darshit patel have sparked new ideas and aspirations in all of you if you found value in today's discussion be sure to hit the like button and be sure to share it with your friends family and people you think can ins- be can be inspired b- with this until next time this is iri talks powered by jivs business school where innovation meets inspiration and i'm palak bansal your host signing off